We have a lot to talk about. Uh, you've been in this job for 40 days? <laughs> Roughly, yeah. Roughly 40 days. Your predecessor uh, subsequently said that he was ousted in a coup. <laughs> yes. Can you describe the coup? Well, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to describe the coup. He was asked by the board to leave the company. Let's put it that way. He had been in the job for what? 9 months, 10 months? Yeah, he was uh, put in the job January 24th. And his predecessor is still under arrest. Yeah, he is in in He's in Japan, can't leave Japan, and is under surveillance. I can't think of a more difficult set of circumstances to assume the CEO's job under. Well, I, get, I must confess it was quite kind of unexpected, but uh, <laughs> I'm very proud and honored to have the uh, trust of the board to lead that role as long as I need to. And, but it's, it was unexpected, I must confess. And, and uh, there have been financial implications as well. I think the first, first half of the year, profits were down, what, 50%? Revenues yeah. down 6%. So given that wonderful uh, starting Setup. place, yeah, yeah. What's, what's the way out for Renault? Well, I think um, um, that we needed to have a reset of the performance and tell the market and our shareholders what is the exact situation of Renault, which is facing difficulties mostly and first and foremost because of the market. Market is extremely tough. We're a worldwide uh, producer, uh, especially in Europe and emerging markets, and those markets are quite tough. Um, so basically, what I am doing is trying to reset where we want to go for the end of the year, for the next year, and also we have announced during this profit warning that we need to work on the midterm plan again and reset again, same thing, the ambition. Not because we can't do it, but just because the market has changed yeah. drastically. Do you, do you think it'll be a pretty dramatic strategy change? Well, not dramatic strategy change, but dramatic change of the ambition most probably. Uh, we have to reset in view of the market, less growth, more complicated, more change in the business model what should be our strategy in terms of portfolio, geographical portfolio, product portfolio, so all that is under review. It could mean pulling out of certain markets or certain products. Obviously, if we can avoid it, we'll avoid it, but we have to ask ourselves the question, in view of the condition, can we just keep the same strategy? I don't think so. The market is changing, we have to adapt, and we have to adapt within the alliance and work with the alliance, very important. But the alliance will remain, the alliance with Nissan will remain intact. Oh, yeah, I, I think, you know, for me, it's extremely clear. Renault can't not survive without the alliance. So does Nissan, so does Mitsubishi. And I think it is extremely clear for the three partners that the alliance is not a goal in itself, it's just needed in order to face the technology changes that we are facing. Uh, the automotive industry is facing. So we've been talking a lot here over the last uh, 48 hours about climate challenges and decarbonizing the economy. Renault, of course, was out there way early with the electric vehicle. I mean, I remember interviewing Carlos Ghosn a decade ago when he predicted, I don't know, what were, what were the numbers? 10% of all cars would be electric vehicles by now. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and, and so what happened? Uh, I mean, was, was it a mistake? to be out in electric vehicles so early? Well, it was clearly not a mistake because what we see today is that electric is the future. We strongly believe that the future is electric, connected, automoto, autom autonomous, sorry, and shared. So he was right. Maybe right a little too early, but he was right nevertheless. And today we benefit from this early move. Renault and the Alliance has been pioneer in electric vehicles. Renault last year had a 22% market share in Europe in electric vehicle. And if you look at the Alliance, the Alliance has more than 700 cars on the road which are pure electric. Do you, do you make money on those cars? We start to make money on those cars. Well, some we start, money, wait, I mean, you sort of either make money or you don't make now, money. Now, some, some of these cars, if I look at our utility vehicles, we yeah. make money. Huh. If I look at Zoe in France, in Germany, we make money. It's not globally positive yet, but we're very close to it. So in your strategy review, you won't pull back your commitment to electric No, vehicles. on the contrary. Just like any other car maker, we're fully bullish on, e on electric vehicle. We think it's the future. It's clean, it's silent, it can be very uh, easily uh, 
used for car sharing. So it's, it's really the future in our what, what has to happen to make it both popular and profitable? <laughs> uh, for the profitable part, it's, it's uh, very easy. You need volume, as, as always. You need volume, you need scale, you need progress in the battery technology. This is just normal stuff, I would say, in the car industry, scale and, and, and additional technology. Now, if in order for that to be um, possible, uh, we need to convince customers, because it's easy to push, but you nevertheless need to have customers. Unfortunately, in the car industry, we have to sell vehicles. And to sell vehicles, we need customers. And customers are starting to believe in electric vehicle once you tested it. Yeah. You, you, you can't get away from it. Yeah. Uh, for the Zoe customers, 95% of the Zoe customers say they would never go back to anything else but electric wow. vehicles. Wow. So it's amazing. But then you need to progress on the autonomy of the car. Today, what is, uh, you have two obstacles, I would say, to electric vehicles. The first one is the autonomy. People are afraid to get out of power in their cars. So they need to be reassured on that. What do we need for that? We need three things. We need, um, we need better battery, I mean, uh, higher uh, range in terms of battery. We need charging station, and for that we need the help of, of the states and some public authorities. And uh, we need faster charging, which is also something that we're working on. Are, are we, are, well, all three of those, are we making progress? Uh, yes. Uh, are you doing the batteries yourself? Or are you no, we're buying the battery. We have partners for the battery. But your partners are making progress. Yes, they are making progress. And actually, you have more and more um, competitors on the battery front. And I'm sure you're aware there are a few projects, at least two in Europe, for having battery produced uh, at a larger scale in Europe uh, together with a research on uh, the next generation of battery, which would be even cleaner, the so-called solid-state battery. I know we have a video of a concept car that you're developing. Is that an electric vehicle? All of them are electric. Okay, well, let's take a look at it then, and yep. then we, can, we can talk a little more about it. So, uh, I got that, a little music. Uh, so, autonomous, shared, driverless. Uh, uh, autonomous, shared, electric. You're doing all three of them. And connected, yes. And you think, all, uh, you think the public's ready to make all three transitions at once? Well, uh, yeah, this is gonna take time. Electric is already here, yeah. connected is coming here. Uh, shared is starting. On yeah. the shared uh, mobility, uh, in 2015, you had 4% of miles which were shared. Yeah. Uh, survey tell us that by 2030, 25% of, of miles will be shared. That so actually, that makes shared bigger than electric. No, because what we believe in Renault is yeah. that this shared mobility should be electric. It should be electric. And then, and then in the future, then you have autonomous. But autonomous is gonna take a little more time. We're working on it, we're partnering with Waymo 
on that front, and we strongly believe that in the future you will have what we call robo-vehicle or driverless vehicles. We already have uh, uh, proof of concept, as we say. Yeah. In Sakli, you saw the car where it's fully autonomous vehicle and some very specific areas and trying to see if it works. Yeah. So among the other things that have happened during this wild ride of a year that Renault has had, um, uh, it, you uh, explored a merger with Fiat, yep. and the French government made it clear they didn't like that idea. It was not that simple. Really it was happened. not that simple. How, how does it work? Because I'm, I'm no, not French. I, I don't uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, everything which is Ren Renault within the alliance is complicated. That nothing uh, is simple. Here. Nothing is simple. And basically, for those of you who have worked with Japanese people, this was so sudden that they needed a little more time to think a little about it. They were in favor of the deal, but they could not exactly express it that way, i.e. a frank yes. So it was a kind of mm, yes, maybe later. But that, unfortunately, was not enough to uh, fulfill the demand of some of our board members uh, in order to be able to provide... Some of your board members, meaning the government board members? Yeah, well, actually, if you go back to what Jean-Dominique Senar said in the General Assembly, yes, indeed. Yes. And that was... that. Um, it's, uh, and it's, it's a pity because we didn't have enough time to go and, and explore better what I think would have been a great deal. But now it's over, and... The well, now, is it's, now it's over, and, Fi and Fiat is talking to Pujo. Is that a problem for you? Well, it's it's a... It's, it's a pity more than a problem. It's a pity because uh, I did personally support the deal as a CFO and I, I still think it was a great idea. Uh, and I think we would have had more synergies than what is gonna be the case between PSA and FCA. Nevertheless, again, it's over. We need to look at the future and we need to see how this is gonna be impacted in the market. I think it can have very positive impact on the market in terms of pricing because our friends from PSA are very good in terms of increasing pricing and we're following their trend. So let's not look at the past, let's look at the future. And for us, the future is clearly the alliance, which I'm sure we can make a lot more efficient than what it is today. Yeah. Uh, let, let's, let me see if there are questions. Anyone have it? Yes, go ahead, please. Identify yourself for Clotu. Thank you, Paulo Carmini, uh, Herman Miller. Have you considered uh, subscription models for your business? Interesting. Yes. We are making also some tests, uh, thanks notably to RCI, which is our bank, a captive bank. We have a, a, for those who don't know, we have a, a captive bank, which is 50 billion euro of asset. And we're making some tests about subscription model where um, uh, you can you know, pay a subscription fee and then you can have various cars along the year depending on your needs. So yes, we're looking into that. We have made some study, some comparison. And it could be promise, promising, but today it's, it's still early to have conclusion it, it, Is that. that subscription, uh, what's the difference between that and leasing? Well, usually when you lease a vehicle, you lease a vehicle. So you have a vehicle for three years, and after three years, you have the opportunity to give it back to the OEM or to sell it yourself, yeah. depending if it's with a, a purchasing option or not. Subscription is more, you pay a fee, and within this fee, you can have access to different cars. For example, you can have a Zoe, an electric car, for the, for the daily way, for the week, a, a, a more a sedan or a small MPV, um, like a Scenic, for the weekend. And if you want to have a, a, a nice drive with your fiancé and have an Alpine, you can have an Alpine twice a year. And, and presumably... Well, presu that's, that's, well, I think it would be very interesting. Yeah, presumably once you get into the subscription business, that could extend to ride sharing as well. Yeah, also. Yeah. And, and you can also imagine having a subscription fee together with some partners like uh, railway, like uh, subways or metro. Tra travel subscription. Travel subscription where you can have access to many things and not only the car. Fascinating. Uh, other questions? Yes, right here and then here in front. I'm Anat, I'm the director of the Smart Mobility Initiative in Israel's Prime Minister's office. Uh, a lot of the car manufacturers are speaking exactly about what you said, the case, connected, autonomous, shared, and electric. So it's not only the Alliance, but a lot of other manufacturers. Sure. What, is your, what exactly is your advantage or what you see is your leverage over them? 
Well, uh, a few things. First, on electric, it's not PowerPoint for us, it's real life. As I just said, we've been pioneer and we're pretty good and contrary to others, we're not bleeding. We're very close to profitability. That's the first point. On connecting, I don't think we have any specific advantage at this stage. On um, car sharing and, and, and mobility, you saw the concept car we have. As I said already, we are partnering with Waymo, and this is not Renault, it's the Alliance, which is partnering with Waymo on driverless car, and I think we have chosen the right partner. And, um, and that's, uh, I missed one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, can I yeah. no that's, that's it. And, 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 then we have, and we have a lot of um, uh, experiences in terms of mobility. Renault, actually not Renault, RCI did buy and, and partner with many startups in the frame of mobility, not only the car itself, but what is even more important, I think, the technology. So we have a few startups which are uh, really working at what type of technology do we need to do the dispatch, do we need to do the fleet management, and to do some of those things. Uh, question right here, and then right over here. I don't mean to miss the people. I have a question. Tesla has just announced building a factory in Germany, um, moving the competition ever closer to you. Um, what do you think is gonna be your advantage for consumers in Europe? Well, the French government wanted them here. Yeah, well, that's the problem, the French government. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, Some, does someone have that quote? To, to, be, to be honest, I, we're not competing with Tesla. It's not at all the same business model. I think Tesla was, we welcome Tesla. Why? Because they helped prove that an electric car can be a premium car, can be a very fun car to drive, and can be a very good base for autonomous vehicle. So I think we, well, we thank Tesla a lot for that. But we're not competing in the same price range. I mean, they're competing against German premium. By the way, good luck, because the German premium are going to be strong on EV with the German quality. We are more mass market producer. Zoe is not as expensive as anything you can find in Tesla. And I think Renault DNA, especially Renault DNA, and we prov we've proven that with Dacia, is to be able to do the exact car people want affordable. Our motto is affordable, clean mobility, affordable to all and accessible to all. And that's something that, if you look at Zoe, it's the best ratio between price and autonomy you can find. And this is gonna stay. Uh, can you make it quick, very quick? Logitech, uh, in a world with, where they move to all shared cars, the estimates are that you'll need 90% fewer cars because people won't need to buy them personally. So how many car companies can survive with 90% fewer cars sold? I don't, I don't agree with this survey for the very good reason. First, some people will always need a car. If you're down in the middle of nowhere in France, in Morocco, in anywhere, I don't believe you're gonna have shared autonomous vehicle at that stage. That's the first point. And the second, when you use those autonomous vehicles, actually that's very funny because we had that discussion with the CEO of Waymo last week. I mean, you are gonna be using these cars so much that the lifespan on a car, instead of being seven years, is gonna be two to three years. And then, okay, uh, you're gonna need less cars, but you're gonna need to renew them more often. So yes, there might be a, 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 an impact on the car industry, but not as massive as what survey used to say a few years ago. And by the way, I think they're also changing their mind on that. Uh, and, and a final quick question. You are acting CEO. Yes. Would you like to be permanent CEO? I will not comment on that. <laughs> okay, then I'll have one more question. Okay. One more question before you applaud. You're not going to get rid of the sponsorship of Formula One, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to comment on that one either. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>